Hi everybody, it's great to be back here again. Today is Erev Rosh Hashanah. It is Sunday, and as I said, I will continue the lesson that I began on Friday. First, let's begin with the looking at this beautiful shofar. Wow, what is so special about the voice of the shofar? We began again. I began. On Friday, um, discussing a little bit, I brought down two different midrashim. One about the first man. We spoke about Elijah the prophet and the whole concept of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob being woken up separately. For some reason, if they were all woken up together, this would bring the Messiah before its time. A lot of questions we have to ask about these midrashim. Why not bring it before its time? But of course, on a simple level, we know that we have to work very hard in this world in order to bring about Messiah. And the fact that this whole story of Elijah, there's one way of looking at the story, that he, you know, that fire came from the heavens and a, and a, a bear interrupted the prayer in between. It was just a show that we have, what, is, what are we doing as, as, as human beings? What are we doing in this world in order to bring Messiah, to make Messiah come? And that brings us all the way back to, the, of course, the um, Rosh Hashanah. Don't forget the story that I brought down that takes place on the new month. The new month is a mini, it's always a mini Rosh Hashanah. The, um, of course, the new year. And was that, again, on that Rosh Hashanah when the first man was created, as we say, and we have to rectify. He sinned on that first day he was created. And the entire world has to return to, be, to that stage before the sin. And the nation of Israel has to lead the world to rectification, to showing, bringing godliness into this entire world. The world today, if you look around us, is suffering. There's so, many, so much negative energy out there. Um, look what's going on in Syria, civil war, and... and the natural disasters throughout the world, earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, this crime is, 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 is all over the place, drugs, iniquity, the world is suffering, disease, financial crisis hitting every country in the world. And though, how do we, again, how do we get ourselves out of the situation? Again, praying is the most important thing, of course, through prayer and, and our supplications that we, we pray every single day to Hashem for help, but of course we have to, God wants us to to take action and to make changes in this world. And there are always special times of the year that are very, very, have the special power to bring about changes. And when a holiday comes, comes around, we are actually reliving that time. We are going back in time and we are actually reliving it. And that, that would bring that, that special spiritual makeup of the holiday is coming to, into place again. And that's what's happening now on New Year. We are being created again today on New Year. I mean, starting tonight. Next two days, it's a two-day holiday. It's very unusual in Israel. It's over two days. And everything, again, is through this. <laughs> through the blowing of the shofar. And what is so powerful, what is so special about the, the voice of the shofar, the kol, the in Hebrew voice means kol, the sound of the shofar. What is so special about the sound of the shofar? You know, some, when prayer, we usually say words of prayer. There is meaning behind the words. Um... And actions is always meaningful to actions, but here this seems to be something so, so deep. I mean, we just all we do is blow blow into a, a horn, a horn of an ayil of a, a keves, you know, different kinds of kosher animals that are allowed to use for horn, except a cow can't be used, but but any other kosher animal can be used. Its horn could be used to blow, and the question is, what is what do we do when we blow that noise and we make that noise into the shofar? Um, as I thought about, there are different t- parts of the Torah that bring down, um, bring down noise, bring down, I'm sorry, <laughs> bring down the shofar, bring down, they mention the shofar in the Torah. And one of them is so powerful that it, remind, it brings us to, to the Mount Sinai, that great event of receiving Torah in the world. And it says that when there were, there were thunder and lightning and there were clouds on the mountain right before, on the third day, which was the sixth day uh, of the month, and on that, all of a sudden, there was a, there was a sound of the shofar, which said it was sound, and it was heard, a very powerful sounding of the trumpet. The shofar was heard, and that shofar wasn't blown by any human being. God was sounding the spiritual shofar we were hearing. The whole entire world, as a matter of fact, heard this shofar in some way, because there's a beautiful passage in the Talmud, brought down in the tractate of Zvachim, it says that the nations of the world all were frightened. All of a sudden, they heard this noise. They know what this noise was all about. And they all came to Bil'am, which was their leader, and they said, what's going on? He said, well, God has a very, very special treasure that's been hidden for 974 generations before the creation of the world, and now he, he's bringing it to the people of Israel. And that's the Torah. 
this of course is hinted in Psalms 29 as it says, Hashem oz la'amo yitain, Hashem yivarechet amo ba'shalom, God will bring strength to his nation, what is the strength? This is the Torah. And this is what Bilam is saying, that God is giving Torah to the nation of Israel, and the nations, when they heard this, the nations said, Hashem yivarechet amo ba'shalom, God should bless his nation with peace. And why were the nations who weren't receiving Torah, was the nation of Israel receiving, why were they blessing um, Israel with peace? Weren't they jealous? I mean, they, they didn't receive the Torah. This brings us back to what we spoke about on Friday, about the first man. And the answer is very simple, is that the nations of the world know deep down, the 70 nations of the world, that they will be blessed through receiving the Torah of Israel. Israel receiving the Torah will receive the power and the, the ability to, to reach out, to be teachers to the entire world, to show them the way, the light, to bring um, world rectification, to really truly rectify the entire world. And that can only come, of course, by Israel receiving the Torah and taking this world, the world which was until then a world of, of void, of, of idol worship, as we all know, and make a big change in the world by having the Torah come down. And that's why the world blessed Israel. And it's so amazing, if we actually open up that chapter in Psalms um, 29, we see, as a matter of fact, that there are, as a matter of fact, I'll open it up, there are seven times that the, the word kol are mentioned. So if we quickly open it up over there, um, I don't want to keep you all waiting, but I have to quickly open up my Tehillim, my Psalms. So we look at 29. There we go. Moving around. Okay, we're almost there. Here we are. So what does it say? Mizmor le David. It says a psalm to David. Havu la Hashem b'nei ilim. Havu la Hashem k'vod v'oz. Havu la Hashem k'vod shemo. Shta havu la Hashem b'adat kodesh. So on verse, then verse 3 it says, Kol Hashem al amayim, the voice of God was on the water. Ela k'vod irim Hashem al amayim rabim. And then it says, Kol Hashem the Koach, the voice of God, with power, Kol Hashem Ba'adah, with the voice of God with splendor, Kol Hashem Shover Razim, the voice of God breaks Arazim, which are cedar trees, and it goes on to, if you count the Kol over here in this, in this psalm, it comes out to seven times. Why seven times? Seven, again, represents the fact that the, the, the voice of Hashem, this, the, the sound reached seven, which could also represent 70, 70 nations of the world that were coming again, Coming to Bilam, they know what's going on. Something was going on in the world. A huge change was taking place in the world. And they were frightened from it. And this was the, the Torah being given to Israel. And again, as I mentioned before, it's for the benefit of the entire universe that the Torah was given to Israel. Today, if we look around, around the world today, it is frightening what's going on. There, unfortunately, there's so many negative things that are taking place in this world. And we have to stand up and make a change. All the negative energy through, again, I mentioned, as I mentioned many times, and I mentioned before, look what's going on. Just look at Syria, what's going on in Syria, how the civil war, bloodshed, and, and all, again, all these, not only in Syria, many, many Arab countries we saw throughout this year, the terrible bloodshed that's going on, killing each other, atrocities that have been committed to um, their own people, one to another. Around the world, terrible tragedies of widespread disease in the world, and terrible natural disasters taking place in the entire world. Financial crisis, every country is being hit again. How do we rectify all these terrible things? How are these terrible things that go on in the world going to change? When is there going to be a real change that people are going to feel in the world happiness and, 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 and true um, rectification in this world? When is it going to happen? It's going to happen again when we all accept upon ourselves the yoke of heaven, when the nations of the world turn to the Jewish nation for guidance of how to again follow Hashem properly. And we can, in this way, we can really rectify the world, what's going on. The shofar, the sound of the shofar, this horn, has the ability to take that, to, to return us, to bring us back to that shofar that was sounded on Sinai. All this, all the, again, the noise, this negative noise that's being heard in the world, this noise pollution will be turned into the noise of the beautiful shofar. sound, the sound of redemption. And on Rosh Hashanah, this is the major part of the day, what, what, besides our praise, which we do so much, but we, we, we do is we blow the shofar. Blowing the shofar allows our, our innermost selves, our souls, which is the simplest voice, the most simple voice from within our souls to come 
and emulate the Creator. We are taking all this deep energy and breathing it right through this horn and sending it all the way up above to the heavens. Just like when God created man, well, as I mentioned before on Friday, that it was the seventh day of, of the, the seventh hour where man sinned, and that seventh hour represents that was the hour that God blew life into men. And on that seventh hour, He gave him a soul. We are, that seven voices that we're hearing now, we're reading in the Psalms, the seven voices hint again also to the man. It's that seventh hour where he was created, where he received the soul, which again hints to the 70 nations. That again, the whole idea is again to revive, to pump a soul, to bring a soul right back into the entire world. And that soul in that world connects to the sound of the shofar, which is really that, that, that breathing out. When it connects to that energy, it will bring us all back to Sinai, where the Torah is given the world, that everyone will connect somehow to the nation of Israel and look to the nation of Israel for guidance and for us to return to Hashem. This is a very, very deep meaning of Rosh Hashanah. But then again, we mentioned on, on Friday, I gave the lesson that the first man sinned on, it was the tenth hour that he sinned. So on the seventh hour, he received the soul and just, and the eighth hour he was placed in the Garden of Eden, and then already he was sinned at the tenth hour. He had to be commanded on the ninth hour of not to eat from the tree. And therefore, we have the ability, we have to return to that exact moment and re rectify that. And that is done again, as we mentioned, on this very, very special day, through the shofar, through the simple blowing of the shofar, which seems like the most simplest act of, of any kind of mitzvah, what do you have to do? Do you just buy a, a ram's horn, or you buy a, 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 any kind of horn of a kosher animal except a cow, and you blow it, and then you do the mitzvah. But this is, just shows, of course, God commanded us on this special day that through this, through this beautiful mitzvah of blowing the horn, we can make a, a very, very big difference and rectify the entire world. You know, we're standing before, who knows what, the history is repeating itself, the world is in turmoil, the world's upside down, the world is screaming, shouting out, the, this shouting out, this, this noise that's going on in the world is a noise of an earthquake <laughs> that is beginning to, um, is, is taking place here. And it's a, it's a shouting of wanting, to, declaring, a wanting to rectify, to self-rectify. And again, and people are like sheep without, without a shepherd, without someone guiding them in the right direction. We have to look again for the special day of Oshana too, as the day that can direct everybody in the proper direction and lead us all through redemption. And that is what's so special again about this very day. So everyone, where they are in their home, anywhere in the world, let them think about the meaning of this very special day. Let them reflect on repenting to Hashem, returning to Hashem, and let them humble themselves before Hashem. And the sound of the shofar we will collect all the sounds of, of, of the terrible things that go on in the world today and turn them to positive energy. All that negative energy will be turned to positive energy and connect to that very great moment of receiving Torah on Sinai and we will all be merited in redemption. So let's end with something we say when we blow the shofar, we, when we finish a, an order of, of blowing, we do something called a tikiyah gedola, a long tikiyah. And that's the, that's, that ends that certain area and that, that's the most powerful um, trumpet blowing there is. So let's do one of those long tikiyot as we end this lesson today before Rosh Hashanah. for you all. I want to bless you all for a wonderful new year. It should be a new year of health and happiness for all of us. It's going to be a very, very special year. So God bless you all. Shana Tova, B'Sarot Avot, Yishol Venechamot.